Welcome to this episode of Real Christianity. My name is Dale Partridge, where each week I offer 15 to 20 minute answers to tough theological and pastoral questions. This is a 100% listener supported audio ministry of relearn.org. And for those who don't know, our mission at relearn.org is to educate and equip ordinary Christians to plant biblical, confessional, and missional house churches. For more information, just visit relearn.org forward slash house. All right, guys, what is the gospel? Now, there are so many different presentations out there. Uh, How can the average Christian share the gospel with a friend or family member? This is a question that I get quite often. And I've done a handful of episodes in the past on this topic, but I thought it was important to do another one because sometimes just a certain uh, angle or presentation of the gospel might register with one person and it might not register with the other. So we're going to do another one of those today. It's the most important thing that we do, right? The Great Commission is not the great suggestion. So we need to be prepared and equipped to present a biblically accurate and intelligible gospel presentation. But before we unpack this important discussion, I want to make just two quick announcements. First, uh, are you interested in planting a biblical house church? Uh, if you if you are and you just feel a little bit um, unqualified or uh, unprepared or not equipped to do so, but you feel called, consider visiting stjustins.org. This is our companion ministry, and it's a biblical house church planting school. It's a one-year program. We have some incredible faculty that are teaching alongside of me, and it's a great program to equip the average Christian man uh, who wants to plant and pastor a house church uh, with everything you're going to possibly need to get started uh, from our own experience as pastors who are uh, in the faculty. And it's just a strong program. Um, If you're interested in doing that, again, visit stjustins.org, and you could just apply for more information, and it would start you through the process of the admissions um, inquiry and getting more on pricing and all that matter. So stjustins.org. The second thing I wanted to talk about is if you're not quite there yet, on St. Justin's, but you're interested in learning more about house church and exploring the idea of biblical house church, what does that really look like? We have a free PDF download that you can get. It's a little ebook called The Basics of Biblical House Church, and you can download that for free at relearn.org forward slash house. Today's question is from Hayden in Nashville, Tennessee, and he asks, Pastor Dale, I've been a Christian for seven years and I am ashamed to admit that I have yet to share the gospel with another person. I have spoken about Jesus. I have let others know that I'm a Christian, but I have not proclaimed the gospel to another person. After much thinking, I believe the reason is that I don't really understand the basic mechanics of the gospel, and it makes it difficult to explain it to others. Can you share how you, or in a conversation, would present the gospel to another person? Okay, good question, Hayden. Uh, Thank you for asking that question. I can also empathize with you. Uh, There was a period in my journey uh, with God where I did not share the gospel because of fear and intellectual and theological insecurities. Um, We also live in an era of the church that hasn't taught Christians how to present the gospel. Instead, they preach a motivational sermon series and encourage you to outsource your evangelistic duty by simply inviting people to the church where they can evangelize them for you. Uh, This is not biblical shepherding. Uh, The Great Commission is not the great suggestion, right? Uh, Every Christian has been called to share the gospel. Now, does that mean that you need to share the gospel with everyone that has a pulse? No. Uh, What this does mean is that when you find yourself in a moment that the Holy Spirit convicts you to share the good news with a person that you are with, you need to do it, right? James 4.17 says, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Let me tell you a story. A few years ago, I was once at a gas station uh, here in Central Oregon, and here they fill up your gas for you, which is really nice, especially when it's snowing. Uh, but I was waiting for gas to be filled up and I was actually watching a video on John Piper on presenting the gospel. And I actually felt 
called at the moment to preach the gospel to the guy that was filling up my gas. And it's pretty rare that I'm not the guy that's necessarily a street preacher, but I just felt called because I was talking to him. And um, I disobeyed that conviction and I started driving back home. And I remember that verse in James 4.17 that basically said, so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. I turned around my car, four miles, drove back, got out of the car, and presented the gospel to this gentleman. And um, so we just have to be obedient to these convictions because you don't want to walk in willing sin. It was just too much for my heart. Um, now, preaching the gospel is not based on a model, okay? meaning there's there's really no one way to do it. Uh, in fact, it's, it's quite organic. In John 3, 8, Jesus says, the wind blows where it wishes, and you heard its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is uh, with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now, I know this is the reaction, the result of the gospel preaching that the Lord brings somebody to new life, or you know, there's a born-again experience. But this means that our central desire should be that our evangelism efforts uh, are God's evangelism efforts. We're not trying to do our own evangelism efforts. I've seen too many Christians walk outside of the spirit in an attempt to manufacture a spiritual moment. And this is hollow ministry and not driven by the prompting or the directing of God. It's driven by the strivings and zeal of men. And that's that's not that's not what we want to go for. So my first point is this. Evangelism is God's ministry and you are simply a vessel which he is going to use. Uh, and this means the first thing we must do is be yielded uh, available and willing to be used by God, right? Romans 10, 17. We talked about this in the previous episode from last week. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Uh, you know, God may use you to present the word of Christ. Um, now, this this takes us to the root of Hayden's question here, right? What is the word of Christ? I think as someone presenting the gospel you know, I'm not going to give you what to say. I'm going to give you some principles behind it. And I think there's really four required points that people need to adhere to during their presentation of the gospel. And so number one is that a person has to believe that God exists and that he made them. Because if he made them, he has a claim and a right to say how that person should live, how they ought to live. Uh, so that's number one. Number two is that you have to believe um, that God has made it known to the world how his created beings, human beings, should live and that that this person has failed to keep those commands. Um, number three is that you have to believe that because they failed to meet his commands, God is righteously angry and because he is also just, he's going to require them to receive the consequences for their disobedience, or as we call sin. Now, this is the bad news and should cause repentance. Okay, so we've got a situation where hey, you're not an autonomous being, independent. You were made. Because you were made, You uh, there, there is a God who created you and told you how you should live. You have failed to stand up to those standards, and you are in his wrath or judgment, and there is a penalty due for those consequences, and this is bad news and should cause you to repent. Number four is you have to believe that God, um, not out of a requirement, okay, but out of his grace, love, and mercy sent his only son to the earth to live a sinless and perfect life for the very purpose to die in that person's place or to die in your place. Now, to take the consequences, this, this is what Jesus did, is to take the consequences that you deserved for your sin so that by belief or faith in him, you will be right with God forever. So Jesus did two things, right? He, he paid the penalty you deserved, and then, which, which created the forgiveness that you needed, and then he imputed or applied Jesus's righteousness, his perfect sinless life to you through faith. This is the good news and should cause joy and obedience. And so you, you have to believe these core things. 
Uh, you know, it also goes on in Romans chapter 10, um, talking about the idea that you have to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead too. Um, you can get deeper and deeper into theology arguments about what's required, what's not required, because when you talk about one thing, you talk about everything. But I think that's the core message right there is that basically God made you. Therefore, he has a claim on how you should live. You're not autonomous. He's made it known how you should live. There's a law. You've disobeyed that law and are under God's wrath. That's bad news. But God made a way out of that where you can be forgiven and reconciled to God. And he, can, he will actually impute Christ's perfect sinless life, his righteousness to you through faith and belief in his son. So this should put some more breadth and meaning behind the passage in John 3.16 that many of us have memorized, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. See, this is just, again, you can wrap that message, that message of that scripture in what I just spoke about. Now, notice that I said a person must believe at the front end of each of those four points. And I say this because if a person doesn't believe that they're a sinner, they can't be saved. Um, that's critical. Um, if they don't believe that there's a God, they can't be saved. If they don't believe that they've broken God's law, then they can't be saved. Charles Spurgeon once said, I do not believe that any man can preach the gospel who does not preach the law. The law is the needle, and you cannot draw the silken thread of the gospel through a man's heart unless you first send the needle of the law to make the way for it. If men do not understand the law, they will not feel that they are sinners. And if they are not consciously sinners, they will never value the sin offering. That's Christ. There is no healing a man till the law has wounded him, no making him alive till the law has slain him. So this is really important, the bad news before the good news. For example, people who believe they are well don't go to a doctor. But those who know that they are sick seek one out pretty quickly. Uh, this is why Jesus said in Luke 5, 31 to 32, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And this is why the good news must always begin with the bad news. Again, without the bad news, the good news is no effect. So Hayden, to answer your question, how do I personally present the gospel? I don't have a specific formula or outline that I use. I think the solution to this problem really is twofold. First, you need to understand the biblical gospel, uh, you know, deeply in your mind and in your heart. Um, now, you know, what you heard at church uh, or what you thought it was isn't necessarily the right thing. You need to really evaluate what the scripture says against what you, you currently believe. Uh, but what the Bible says about the gospel is, is really the central, it's the core part uh, second, what I want you to do is you need to have a genuine comprehension of that biblical gospel in your own life. I truly believe that you can't explain what you don't understand, or you can't offer what you haven't experienced. And sadly, thousands of people in the church are walking around calling themselves Christians because they were a victim to what I call, and what many pastors call, easy believism, right, or decisionism. Uh, they pray to prayer, they go to church, they read the Bible every now and then, but they don't have a clue about what the gospel really means uh, because they've never experienced it themselves. Uh, a quote that I use often uh, from Dr. Stephen Lawson, he once said, the only thing worse than not having the assurance of salvation is having the false assurance of salvation. Now guys, we're in an era of the church that is filled with false dead converts because they really never heard the true gospel. Uh, you know, they, they, you know, they, they believe that, you know, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life, that gospel. And they jumped on the moral, philosophical, religious bandwagon, but were actually never born again. Uh, so Hayden uh, and anyone else listening, the, you, what I want you to do is I want you to just study the scriptures, really understand the gospel, really understand the, the, the narrative of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John study the words of Christ, uh, study Romans is a great book, bury yourself in God's word, seek to understand the beauty of the gospel, and then experientially try to really translate what was happening in your own heart 
And again, measure that against the scriptures because our emotions aren't always honest to us. And we need to, to measure those against scripture. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a few resources for anybody that wants to look into this more. Uh, and these two resources, actually, I think I have three resources, uh, will be available at the post page for this episode at relearn.org. You just go to the search function and um, you can type in the title, which is What is the Gospel? This is also episode 102. And so this should be able to be found uh, that way as well. But you just go there and I'll have these three links there. There's a YouTube video uh, that is titled, What Must Someone Believe in Order to Be Saved? It's by John Piper. Great short video to watch. There's a book that I read that I'll link there as well called What is the Gospel by Greg Gilbert. Short book, really great read, uh, breaking down the gospel. Uh, Another book that is a deeper understanding of how the gospel works, the mechanics of the gospel on the back end for the believer, not necessarily for the lost person, is titled Chosen by God by R.C. Sproul. Again, you can go to the site and find those links there. Um, That's it for this episode, guys. Hopefully that was helpful. If you guys are a regular listener to this show, um, we just ask you that you leave a review. You don't even need to to write anything. You just go to the podcast app, the iTunes podcast app, and just tap the stars. Um, These reviews, they really do help the uh the the show because uh, more people get to see the show because uh, the algorithms work based off of how many ratings you have and how many downloads you have so this really does help get this show in the ears of other believers uh, on that note my name is dale partridge and we will see you guys next wednesday thank you for listening to this episode of real christianity if you're a regular listener to this show would you prayerfully consider making a donation to support our ministry efforts simply visit relearn.org forward slash donate. Again, that's relearn.org forward slash donate. And for those looking to explore the idea of joining or planting a church in your home, you can download our free PDF ebook titled The Basics of Biblical House Church by visiting relearn.org forward slash house. Lastly, do you have a theological question you would like answered on the show? Submit your question at relearn.org forward slash question. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Real Christianity. We will see you next Wednesday.